Hey everybody, this is the Zot Man with another uh, series review for you. Recently, I had the pleasure of watching Marvel's Jessica Jones on Netflix. I actually binge watched this over the weekend, and I would probably say it was my it was the first show where I really kind of binge watched um, something. With Daredevil, it kind of took me over the course of a week. Daredevil was the first Marvel Netflix show uh, to come out earlier this year, and so this is our second show. And I think at this point now, it's uh, it's a good thing to decide, I guess, what direction, what kind of direction this uh, Netflix deal will be going, or, you know, if this is even something worth it. But first, you know, I will review the show. Jessica Jones is based off of a very mature comic called um, Elias. Uh, came out a couple years ago, 2001, I believe. And I, I did not read any of the comics, so and I didn't know anything about Jessica Jones before going in. So I, I went in... Uh, just not knowing what to expect, you know, not really knowing at all. I liked the trailers. I loved the idea that David Tennant, whom we all know as the 10th Doctor from Doctor Who, was going to play the role of the villain, uh, Zebediah Kilgrave. Um, so I thought that was, that in and of itself was a, a huge hook because I absolutely love David Tennant. I love his acting. He is a, um, a very, very good actor. Um, so Jessica Jones, we see... We meet the character Jessica Jones. She had a short-lived superhero career and is now a retired superhero running her own private investigations. She's a private investigator now, so she'll help people. Um, she'll help people track uh, missing people down and um, do all kinds of these different things that police, I guess, might not have the time to do. Um, and she'll do it for money. And with that money, most of it she spends on. Um, as she says in the first episode, booze. You know, boosts, booze costs money, usually. Um, a great line that she um, put out to Luke Cage in the first episode. Now, Luke Cage is another character that we get to see in this show, and who will be getting his very own show next. And I have to say that I really, really like him. I love how they portrayed the fact that he is literally unbreakable. He cannot be cut and stuff like that. And in my opinion, I would say that's probably even better than what Wolverine has, um, but yes, it, you know, he was a very good character in this show, uh, though he doesn't appear much, because obviously we need to, you know, save his best stuff for his own show, uh, what role he got here was very well done, um, so now Jessica, she is a private investigator, and she realizes by the end of the first episode that her, I guess, her old enemy, Zebediah Kilgrave, um, known in the comics as the Purple Man, uh, is back with a vengeance um, to, I guess, basically, um, as the series reveals later on, basically kind of win her, you know, win back her love. Um, so, yeah, that does def definitely seems to be an odd motivation or an odd goal for a Marvel comic book villain, but nevertheless, this is what we got. Um, I would also, I would like to say that going forward, there will be major spoilers, so for those of you who have not binge-watched it, uh, you have been warned. So, Kristen Ritter plays Jessica Jones. I don't really have any, uh, prior experience with seeing, uh, Kristen Ritter, except I know that, uh, she was in Breaking Bad, a show that I've never seen, so I can't say anything about, um, I can't compare this performance of hers to, you know, any other performance that she's done in the past, so... Uh, I'm really sorry about that for my lack of knowledge, uh, but I do know David Tennant, um, having played the 10th Doctor from Doctor Who, and being a huge Star Wars fan, I know that he was the uh, old Republic-era droid Hu Yang in a Clone War, in, in a story arc of the animated series Star Wars The Clone Wars, uh, which I thought he was very great in, too, so... Yeah, I knew a few roles of his going in, and um, he absolutely killed this role. Um, he was brilliant. He made, to me, he made Kilgrave one of the best villains that the MCU has given us. If there's one thing that these Marvel Netflix shows are doing exactly right, it's giving us really good villains that are, very, excuse me, very well fleshed out. Um, you know, kind of have two sides to their own coin, and they're just so much fun to watch too. In the case of Kilgrave, he's hilarious. You know, there are times where I just, I'm laughing because of, um, you know, some of the lines that David Tennant drops. It's just brilliant stuff. And I can see why uh, the director of the show, Melissa Rosenberg, kind of 
you know, was in danger of getting carried away by giving him way too much dialogue because, because let's be honest, it's so, you know, it's so well done uh, and so good. Um, he, he is a multi-layered character and so is Jessica. Jessica is a hard drinker, you know, has a short fuse and, you know, admittedly, you know, she sleeps around. She, she's, and then vomits afterwards. Uh, she's, a, a you know, to me, a multi-dimensional character with a, a very tragic past. Um, the impact that Kilgrave had on Jessica in the past is truly, you know, heart-wrenching. And by the end of the, at the end of the show, even, Jessica still kind of, you know, feels the worst about herself. And we can definitely tell that she's, even after, again, major spoiler, even after she kills Kilgrave, um, she, you know, she still, she still has a lot of baggage, uh, to carry, and, uh, how exactly she's going to deal with all that, that remains to be seen. Um, like Daredevil, the show, um, had very great production values, uh, great, you know, just perfect casting for everybody. Um, I particularly loved, uh, Jessica's, um, apartment neighbor, uh, Malcolm. I really liked his transition from kind of this guy who's always, you know, always drunk because of Kilgrave's, uh, influence, um, and then transitioning to, um, transitioning to kind of this, you know, this sober character that really just wants to make a difference and really wants to help people, other people who are under the influence of Kilgrave. Kilgrave is known for his mind control powers, while Jessica is known for her physical strength. So I really liked that contrast, that Jessica's strength, you know, lies in physical things, while Kilgrave's strength lies in, you know, in the mental things. Um, I think that offers a great contrast. One of the things I absolutely loved about the way they portrayed Jessica's powers was that they didn't make it so that when Jessica lifts a car in the first episode, there's like this, you know, this shot that kind of turns around Jessica and has like this epic, you know, um, epic, profound music. No. Every time she displays a power, whether it's uh, using her physical strength to completely wrench a lock off of a door or lift up a car, it's done in a way that's, like, it's done in a way, it's portrayed in a way that's, like, it's not a big deal, you know, it's not a big deal, okay, so what, she has these powers, you know, big deal, and at this point, given everything that this cinematic universe, you know, this Marvel universe has experienced with uh, the Avengers, and finding out that, yes, aliens do exist, and uh, the Norse gods exist, and stuff like that, um, simple, you know, wrenching the lock off of doors or lifting, um, lifting cars halfway up, you know, should not, you know, should honestly not even be frowned upon at this point. I think a lot of people are probably used to it. You know, they're probably still terrified, but used to it. Um, but I really liked the story. One th um, I really liked the story. I like how it, you know, I like how it all came down, uh, to the ending. I like the way that Jessica took Kilgrave out by just snapping his neck just like that. Though I was a little disappointed because, uh, Kingpin survived in Daredevil. Uh, he lives, you know, at the end of Daredevil, but Kilgrave is, um, killed. Although, not even halfway through the show, through this show, I realized that the only way this was going to end was that Kilgrave had to die. You know, that's just how it had to be. His influence is far too powerful to be kept in prison. Um, <clears throat> So with that in mind, I do have to say one of the biggest complaints that I have now about these Marvel Netflix shows is that they're too long, which would be a little bit surprising because each uh, Daredevil, both Daredevil and Jessica Jones only run at about uh, 13 episodes, uh, you know, which isn't even the 22 episode length that uh, seasons like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has. Um, uh, but each episode, each 13 episodes are about, like, 55 minutes long, max, and, um, and I feel like even if you, even if they reduced it to the, uh, TV, real, like, uh, TV show length of, like, 44 minutes, that would definitely make a difference, but I feel like there are times where the show, where both shows really just feel like they drag, they just drag on because they're determined to fill 13 episodes of content, and you can tell that they just don't have enough ideas to do that. I do believe in the fact that um, characters need the time to, you know, to grow and uh, breathe and, and develop and stuff like that, but 
Um, in the case of both of these shows, they do such a good job developing these characters in shorter amounts of time that we don't need all that extra time and all those extra uh, subplots. The, um, the lawyer divorce subplot only paid off for like a matter of 10 minutes in one episode. Um, and I, I did not care for Jerry Hogarth. I, did, I, I will say this now. I do feel like the fact that they changed her character from a, you know, a straight male dude in the comics to a, a gay female here just really screams um, the idea that they really were pushing for diversity in this series. And I honestly have no respect. I have no respect for writers that try to push for diversity like this with absolutely little to no payoff. Um, if, they're try if they're trying to push for diversity for the sake of diversity, I do not respect that. You know, I, I know that sounds terrible and I'm not, and I'm not being hateful towards, you know, any people, people group here, but if, um, if there's diversity for the sake of the story, then by all means, you know, you're, it's fine. This show is also a TVMA for a reason. In some cases, it's even more intense than Daredevil. I thought uh, you couldn't get, honestly, couldn't get any far further with the violence than what, than what Daredevil did with, but this show does have a lot of sexual content in it. Um, though there's no graphic nudity, a lot of the, um, a lot of the, you know, stuff that happens in those encounters are very, very deeply implied. Uh, so, this isn't, Jessica Jones is a really good show. Um, overall, I would give it about, let's see, I would probably get it, give it four out of five stars. Um, you know, one star taken off for the, for the divorce subplot. The pacing is very sluggish. But I do think that there, there is some just some real gems to find in this show. And even if um, even if you've never heard of Jessica Jones before, I do kind of recommend that you check this show out. I think that there is some stuff worth seeing. I also appreciated some of the references, though there were very few. Uh, some of the references to um, uh, some of the references to the larger MCU, like the Avengers and and the Battle of New York. You know, there are some references there that I really appreciated. Uh, several scenes that I thought were great, like when Jessica's, you know, Jessica goes beast in that room and starts throwing things around after that couple that's about to get divorced, um, really kind of, really kind of gets down on her for her, uh, powers and then kind of compares her to the Avengers and everything. That was a, an excellent scene. Uh, the scene when Jessica's, um, beating up Kilgrave inside his, uh, glass cell, that was, you know, that was excellent stuff. Great acting from both of them. Uh, those are two scenes that really stick out in my mind. Uh, the episode Sin Bin would be my favorite. So I'm looking forward to what they do with Luke Cage, but I'm hoping that in the future, I really hope that they lessen, reduce the number of episodes to maybe 10 at least. These need to be more like miniseries. Um, I don't think that 13 hours exactly is necessary to tell the whole story because I feel like they just, they stretch too much of it out. I had the same complaint with Daredevil, and I'm having the same complaint with Jessica Jones. However, I do believe that Daredevil is uh, has more replay value. I think Daredevil has more charm and more humor to it than Jessica Jones does. Jessica Jones kind of tends to kind of drown in its own, you know, pretty heavy darkness. That, that you kind of lose the fun touch to it. Whereas with Daredevil, there always seem to have the there always seems to have that feeling of fun to it, which I uh, really appreciated. So. Um, you know, fingers crossed for Luke Cage, and this is the final brand new MCU project that we've gotten this year. If you'd like, you can comment below on what your favorite MCU project was this year. Um, there were there was quite a bit to get this year, some of it good, some of it bad, so you guys let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you in the next review. Thank you. Bye.